Good evening, friend. That was just in time, wasn't it? <laughs> I to bring that one on a run. <laughs> Pick it up. But I'm just giving the testimony to that thing that happened. He was um, there. I just want to bring the extra. He used to show me that he was healed. And so many talking about great things. And today was reading letters. Oh, my. It just stirred my heart. Mail was so heavy. It will take me a week to get through it. <laughs> so I'm happy to hear those wonderful testimonies. One lady was telling me in a letter today about she was cancer in the very worst stage, and that I saw her in a vision and was at my hotel room and come and spoke and told who the lady was and what her conditions was. She was healed and normal and well now. The ladies in the audience, oh, God bless you, my sister, and uh, many other great things that our Lord has been doing. And I'm just so happy that many of them meeting me and saying different things happening. I just trust that they'll never see. You have to keep on going. And how many have been healed in the meeting? Let's see your been healed by divine healing. Let's see your hands in the meeting. Oh my, just love. Some of them crippled, then people blind, deaf, dumb, and chairs crippled up, paralyzed. How our Lord has worked with us in great, marvelous ways, and how happy and thankful we are for that tonight. <clears throat> I was just talking to my brother Sicarian, uh, all of you know, Brother Demas, he's here somewhere. I think he's sitting right over here to the right. I mean, oh, Demas Sicarian, let's see. Oh, sure. Would you stand up, Brother Demas? He's something. Just raise yourself up, will you? Oh, uh, Brother Demas Sakarian, <laughs> nearly all of you know him here. He's from down Downing down here, a very fine brother. We had much friends. No one knows this man, of course. This uh, Congressman Upshaw. He, <laughs> he uh, was talking to him back then. I have just thinking uh, to, tonight seemed like a God put it up on my heart tonight to come and. Maybe just before going to Africa, I would like to have my farewell meeting, maybe at my hometown in Jeffersonville, if I could get that auditorium there, right where the, this was ministered to me, and I would like to have my farewell meeting there. If I can, I'd like to give everybody an invitation to come. All of my friends. At my home, I'd like to gather a big group of us together and go right to the little cabin where he met me and talked to me. And just uh, get it out there on that hill, the thousands, and offer our praise to Almighty God right there for what he's done before we plunge the dark fields of Rhodesia and India and down and, and back into Jerusalem. I would be so happy. I don't know whether they whether I could get that at that time or not. I see several thousand people, and I would be happy to do it. If it is, I'll have it announced in the papers and things. And if your vacation is that time, I wish I could say I'd pay your way up there, but I'll take up an offering and do the best I can. <laughs> if I take up an offering, <laughs> I never took one in my life. <laughs> so I'm not ready to almost have to hitchhike if you take my offering. I told you about one time I started taking my first offering. Jerry, it was about the first time I started taking an offering. I couldn't do it. I told my wife, we got one of those places where we couldn't make ends meet, you know, and I said, I'm going to take an offering tonight. She said, I'm going to sit right down front and watch it. And so we just had a tough time. We almost had to do it. I thought, well, I just can't make that. I just got to do it. I never did take an offering in my church, so I... Not because they wouldn't give it to me, because they would, but I just, I was big enough to work, so I, right now, now this is not to be, to be humble or not to show, but from the bottom of my heart, I wished I had a place where I could work off in these meetings. That's right, so I wouldn't have to even take up an offering or something. That's the truth. I just dread the thoughts of taking up an offering. Don't know why. But I've often seen that three things that hinder a minister. One main three things, one of them is money, the other is women, 
shows popularity. That's exactly it. When a man gets to a place, he just has to scream and cry and carry on and think so much of money, he forgets the heart, he's gone. That's all there is to it. That's right. We have to meet expenses and so forth. And the next thing, when I have the greatest respect for women, Christian women, I think that a good woman is a, one of the best gifts that God could give a man outside of salvation. I believe that. A good woman. But <laughs> I'm very cute still right there. I'm married with an old fat girl up there. I love with all my heart. <laughs> I've never seen no one to take her place. <laughs> so I know as long as I say a Christian, I feel that same way. That's right. And the next thing is, is popularity. When sometimes God can give a man just a little bit of a few friends or something, and, and they, which we all love friends. Now, don't get me wrong, I just love friends. But when you get to thinking maybe you'd have a little audience of people or something a little above their average, you begin to think, look who I am. <laughs> Brother, you're on your road right down, right down. That's right. That's so it should be that way. God knows what's best. That, that's true. And you have to watch that. Satan sure throws it out there, awful flowerly. But if we just stay under the blood, <laughs> and you pray that I will. I remember, I, I could fall. But if you keep praying for me, God keeps loving me, I'll make it. <laughs> and um, I believe if you pray for me and I try my best, God will continue to love me then. Don't you? So I'm. I pray for each one that way. And that's the reason in my meetings, I usually have a night for ministers to pray for the sick. Last time when I was here, you don't know the fine letters I got at home, you minister, brother. Every meeting, I always try to get the minister, the local pastor, before the people. Let them come and pray for the sick. I, I'm not the only person to pray for the sick. No, sir. Any Christian that believes in divine healing is ordained to pray for the sick. You notice the night, I'll have you stand up and put your hands on one another. And if the person gets healed, then the person say, Well, Sister So and so had her hands laying on me. See? Or Brother So and so had his hands laying on me. Many times a Christian has his hands laying on a sinner. You say, A Christian man laid his hands on me and I got well. See? After all, it's the Lord Jesus that does the healing. See? It isn't who's doing the praying, it's who's doing the healing, and who's doing the believing. That's the next thing. It's your faith that heals you. Not mine, yours. And so there, I like to have a night and let all of my ministering brethren come up and stand up and let the people come and pray for them. And when the anointing of the Holy Spirit's down, and let the people come through the line, and the ministers lay hands on them, and, and all my skips the minister before the public. You don't have to wait for somebody who's got a healing campaign in town to be healed. Because your pastor or your neighbor that's a Christian, anybody's got a right to pray for you. The Bible said, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you might be healed. If there's any that's sick among you, let them call the elders. Now, we call them in our groups, we call them the deacons. The, the, let them call the elders of the church. Let them anoint them in oil. It's not called the elder, but the elders, plural, two or three. Or two or three are gathered together and agree and pray. See, that's the way to do it. And after all, we're here to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ, his mercy and his goodness to us. And we're thankful for him. <clears throat> I'm beginning on the fourth day of June, our dear Lord being willing, we're to begin over here at this Bible college. You know where he said last night, I can't speak Spanish. Yes, sir. That's where it's at. That. <laughs> and where he said that. Uh, close to Mesa. Is that right? I'm improving. <laughs> and so uh, that's where it's the next meeting's going to be, at Post to Mesa. And uh, I got that wrong out of it, did I? Just about right. <laughs> He said, we heard he was, so I'm getting along pretty well. So that will be the next meeting after Oregon, going up to, to Grant's Pass with our brother Hall. 
where the people up there went out and built a big tabernacle, and we went up there in one meeting and almost, I think, almost paid for the thing, didn't we, brother? All paid a whole lot on it in one meeting. And, and so then this, uh, we're going back again this time. I wish you all had them big tabernacles everywhere, just everywhere. You've got one here in Los Angeles. <laughs> And they should have them everywhere in the country that when we can't get those auditoriums, there'd be big tabernacles open, you see, like that. The world with their jazz bands and things has the auditoriums all tied up. But I'm thankful for places like Calvary Tabernacle and different places like that. We can, we can come into them and have them. We can thank you. Thank you, brother. And so this time it's in a tent. And we were out there today looking the place over and very nice place, and we we hope we have a good meeting in there. Tell your neighbors down in that part of the country to come. Now, the Lord bless you each one. I think that this meeting has has already produced a great result, and and the fact that we're all kind of in strain because of so many different meetings going on in the city, and we. I haven't heard of from Brother Freeman, but I know he's having a good meeting. We're all praying for him that he will have a good meeting. And we got crossed up a little bit there, not he and I, but through some way, misunderstanding or uh, management getting the meetings together, they didn't understand either. But it might have been God's will for us to do this. If we can see that we're brethren, and at the Angeles Temple and the other places where the meetings are going on, and I understand that Brother King or King, Brother Paul King, is to come in beginning, I guess, Thursday night, isn't it? Thursday night in this very tabernacle here. And we pray that God will give Brother Paul King a very wonderful meeting here with hundreds of souls saved and many healings and filled with his spirit and goodness, getting ready for the coming of the Lord. I'm happy that Brother Cop here throws his doors open for all of us to come in here at this, this temple and the Board of Deacons and whoever what the control is, management. I want to say another thing for our ushers and so forth that you got here. They're wonderful men. So happy for them. Now, I wish to read just a few words. I'm not sure whether I read this since I've been here or not, but if I do, I, I don't need to retrace things that I've been around for months and so long here that this is the longest I believe I ever come and stayed in one place since I've been in the ministry. It's right here in Los Angeles. And um, this is my second trip back in a, a few months apart, a few, and then nights run anywhere from three to five nights and we we're on the move somewhere else. Now in the book of St. Luke, the second chapter, I would have watched the clock and do my best. <laughs> I talked too much. Mother said I talked before I walked. <laughs> you know what the old saying is, your tongue's your ruin. So I, maybe that's right, but I'm talking to the Lord now. And so in the second chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the 25th verse, just to read just a few verses and then pass a few comments and then to call our prayer line. Tomorrow night, after the main line is one of the lines are over, I'm going to have a ministerial night. I want all the cooperative pastors to get their place here and to set you on the platform with me. A group of people up and let all the pastors be out here and along with them praying for them after service and that you all might see great signs and wonders to be done. And Wednesday night is the closing night. Now, and we read this way in the Word of God. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parent brought in the child Jesus to do for him as the custom of the law, then took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, 
Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. With our heads just a moment. Our beloved Savior, tonight we are happy for this privilege together here in the house of God in the company of this people to worship thee. As David of old said, he would praise the Lord in the congregation of the upright. And we are so thankful tonight that the Spirit of God still makes our hearts rejoice to praise him in the congregation of the upright. And now, Father, grant tonight that in each heart there will be a manger made, or a room made, that Jesus of Nazareth might come in with all the fullness of divine faith, that he might stand in each heart tonight and take the initiative side and, and take away all doubt, throw away everything that's unlike him, Lord, all the unbelief and skeptic ideas, and just take over the heart and, oh, what our eyes will see then. What a night this could be, Father, just by every Christian with one accord. While we're gathered here where the Holy Spirit has fallen many times, save, fill the believers, heal the sick and the afflicted, and constantly meetings are going on. What a place and what a time just now for him to come tonight just at the eve of the closing of this meeting, Lord, and sway every heart to him with full assurance that he's here, present since now, to deliver every person that's in the building from anything and every redemptive blessing is theirs by faith, by believing just now. God, for these next few minutes, to hide us away. May the shades be pulled down to the cares and thoughts of this life right. over our memories and our hearts. And may we just see Jesus and him alone. And we know that if we could draw a picture of the love of God ten million times more than the seas of this earth, banked into one tube a few inches across would reach billions of miles beyond the stars, and thinking of the pressure that there would be on the bottom of that tube, how all that water, with all that billions of tons of pressure trying to press down, and yet the love of God is searching our hearts tonight. Great powers of strength that he would like to find one little crevice to leak through, to come into our lives and give us this great power and unction beyond even man's understanding. Grant it, Lord, tonight that the doors of heaven will be pulled back, and the Holy Spirit will take over, full control. May our souls be flooded with such a rush that we'll forget all about being crippled or being sick, and just rise to the feet, glorifying God, taking him at his promise, claiming his redemptive blessing. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm thinking just now of this aged old priest that we just read about by the name of Simeon. And he was a man who waited for the consolation of Israel. There's been times where the church has got real low, but God has never been without a witness since the world began. He's always had somebody that he could put his finger on and say, that's my servant. Now I can send him anywhere I want him to go and he'll go. Aren't we happy for that? God's ministry. And the day had got very dull in those days. There were hundreds of people, thousands of them that had turned away from the tradition and away from the faith, gone back, lukewarm, but there was a little remnant who looked for the consolation of Israel. That was John the Baptist and Simeon and, and the prophetess of the temple and many more who waited constantly, believing that God would fulfill his promise. They was waiting. They believed. 
No matter how long the promise had been, they believed that the woman's seed would come and would bruise the serpent's head, like God promised. Now the waiting of the Messiah had been 4,000 years, and in every generation they had looked for the Messiah to come. But that didn't stump Simeon. He was an old man in his 80s. But still he believed that he would see the Messiah. He had a long white beard, I can imagine, white hair. And he was a, a great man among the people. He had a great prestige. But he had a testimony besides that. That's what I like. Besides all of his scholarship and all of his popularity, he had a humble heart before God, a receptive heart that God could deal with. And he had a testimony for that that he was going to see the Lord's Christ before he died. Think of it. Great man, David, Solomon, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, a string of prophets and righteous men had looked for the coming of the Messiah for 4,000 years. Great man. But yet this man, even 80 years old, approximately, he was an elderly man, Believed by the Vulcans, he was in his age. An old man, and yet went around and said, I'm not going to see death before I see the Lord's Christ. Well, they say, Simeon, why do you think that? Because the Holy Ghost revealed it to me. And I'm not going to see death until I see the Lord's Christ, and I believe what he says is the truth. Amen. Oh. That would get us feeling religious right away, won't it? You know, I feel religious once in a while. I can shout in the third even. That's, I know salvation don't altogether rest upon shouting, but that goes with it. That's right. And yet somebody said, you're an awful noisy Baptist. Well, I'm a Pentecostal Baptist now, you know, so I got the Holy Ghost. So I... I, I when the Holy Ghost comes in, he does the carrying on. I just help him. <laughs> Amen. I just act out the way he's feeling in me. <laughs> Rejoicing. Now, I think of Simeon, the Holy Spirit revealing it to him that he was not going to die now until he seen the Christ. Although he was awfully old, but and he had a lot of prestige. Now, what if he thought, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's just an impression now. Now, I, I, I just, maybe I'm just, I'm just a little worked up. I better not say this around where people can hear me because I've got a great rest. God belongs to the big church, you know, so I better be careful. But he believed God. And he believed what the Holy Ghost said was the truth. And he expected to see Jesus, be, or Christ, before he saw death because the Holy Ghost revealed it to him. How many times God, working with people in the ages past, when you're expecting anything, and the only way that you can be expecting is upon some sort of a revelation or a promise. If I told you I was coming to Downey, California, over here to this place in California, on the... That's where it's at, Costa Mesa. If I told you that I was coming to Costa Mesa, if I could spell it, I'd write it down, but seventh grade education couldn't get that out. Anyhow, if I told you I'm coming on June the 4th to begin there, you kind of believe that I'll be there, don't you? If I say I'll, I'll meet you there, well, if all possible, I'll do it. Because a man of his word will be honest and keep his promise, let alone a Christian. Now, there may be something happen that I can't, but as far as I know, the Lord willing, I'll be there. Now, you believe that, and the people believe it, so they're fixing to erect a big tent down there and fix it up. Now, that's because that we promised to be there. I promised I would come back here, and when I got here, found out other meetings were going on, oh my, I thought I'd better get back, but I promised. I was coming, so I, I had to stay here. I promised it. And so 
God has rewarded us for keeping our promise. Now, Simeon believed because the Holy Ghost had promised him. He was looking for it. If you're expecting it, you've got something behind that you believe that God has promised it, then you've got a right to expect it. Is that right? When God promises it, now, I might break my promise because I'm a man. And your friend might break his promise or her promise. But God won't break his promise. He can't because he's God. Can you imagine how pure and unadulterated his promises are? How infants? Well, if I go to a spring and my grandfather drank out of that spring and it was clear and it tested the water, it was 100% pure. My father drank out of it, it was 100% pure. And all down through life, I drank it out of it and 100% pure. Well, I'd have enough faith to go back and believe it. If I take a drink of water, it would be all right, wouldn't you? Through the generations, down through several generations, it's been proven 100% pure. Why? Because the stream that's gushing it up, where it's coming from, its foundations down here, its bed, is sowing up pure water. Now, if it'll test 100% pure, how much more will the promise of God test? 100% right, because the basis of it, God's Word comes from God, which is infinite and pure and holy, and He can't lie, for He's God. There you are. Now, when God promises anything, say, that's right. Amen. I was thinking when I was talking to the congressman this afternoon, when I met him, about when he had been all these years on these crutches and crippled in the times he had been prayed for. But he had stood here. He had seen what the Holy Spirit had said to everyone while revealing the heart, the secrets of the heart. And he seen when he told people, no matter what was wrong with them, that they were healed, they got up and acted on it and was well. Then he thought, oh, if he could only tell me, and there the Holy Spirit fell down, told him his condition and all about it, and said he was healed. Up he got. He believed it. No matter what the, how long you've been crippled or what it was all about, God had done made the promise and it's him to believe it. Amen. God's promise where two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. He sure. Whatever they agree upon, ask they shall receive it. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. They'll be given to you. Now isn't that wonderful? That's the promise, God's promise. We believe it. I believe it so. Not long ago, standing at the place when the, the angel supernatural being came down and spoke this, oh my, king, mark, rich man, poor man and all, thousands come, how could I believe that? But I know you told me the truth every time that he spoke to me. And I know that was bound to be the truth, and I stepped out saying it was so. And he fulfilled it. And I've never seen him, and he never will say anything but what's right. Because he can. It comes from God. Daniel, when they told him to throw him into the lion's den, he was expecting God to be there. He believed that he lived right before God. And he had a right, and every day he raised the stage, if there was any of them days towards the temple, and look towards that holy temple and pray because he believed that there was a, a burning sacrifice on the altar at that hour at the temple, and he believed that God heard his prayer because there was an innocent substitute died in his place making an atonement. And when he went into the lion's den, he did not fear the lion because he was expecting God to deliver him. Amen. Jonah. There's the man that had a lot of symptoms. People think that when I look at this prayed bar and say, well, my hand isn't any better, that don't mean you're not healed. When you're prayed for, you're healed. And frankly, you're healed before you're prayed for. For Jesus died at Calvary to heal you and paid the price. If you had a watch in the pawn shop, somebody went out and... and paid the pawn bill or whatever what you had on him, and the man gave a receipt and sent it back, said, here you are, it's paid off. You've got a right to go down and not pay for the watch again. Go down and show the receipt and take your watch. Is that right? Or whatever you got pawned. 
And listen, the devil put us in the pawn shop. Back there from Adam's scene. But Jesus came down and paid the pawn bill. Wrote it on the word. I've got a right for it. Amen. Satan, get back. <laughs> I got a right for it. Mayor's brother told me, you can't get well. I said, I got a right to. Amen. Mom, he said, well, you inherited from your father. I said, but my heavenly father redeemed me. Amen. I'm out of the farm shop now. Amen. But just move over, Satan. He said, all your school symptoms are around you. I said, stand around. Let's let me testify. I like where you hear me. <laughs> he said, I'll make you sick. I said, I'll testify that much harder. I'll make that much more testimony. If you want to hear me praise God, stick around a little while. You'll hear me. I just kept praising God. I'm amazed how hot spring had to flee. Just heard him scoot off his old slew foot right down the street as hard as he could. Had to! Why, the gospel of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost is burning him up! Amen. He had to! God's word's right. We've got a right for them redemptive blessings. Let's expect them. Believe them. God's going to bring them to pass. Don't you believe it? I am not taking very much discernment these nights. I just turn myself loose to feel good with the Holy Ghost with you all while I'm here on this time. And we got a right for anything God promised. Just claim it. Receive it. Believe it. Go on. You got any symptoms? Forget about it. The symptoms don't mean nothing. Right? Just believe it. A long ago in Houston, as a boy came by, I believe I might have told you about the last time I hear so many things that happened. There was an old man, I'll tell this one, and there's a fellow named John Ryan. And the fellow was blind at the meeting there near Fort Wayne. And he come in the meeting, there's several thousand people gathered in that night. And about two nights after the piano had played the great physician. Now he's near the sympathizing Jesus. And the angel of God in a whirl of a halo whirl down in the room where I was at. And I thought the custodian turned the light on me. And here, when I had the little boy in my arms, I dropped him and why, the girl, Nazarene girl, playing the piano, she jumped up and started running, screaming. She seen that little boy walking off the platform normal. Why, she jumped up and she was playing the great physician, and it just kept playing on the great physician. Now he's here, the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping hearts of the church, no other name but Jesus. There he was playing. About a night or two after that, this old man came through the line. I prayed for him. Had a line coming just as fast as they could. Two men was leaving. He was blind. And he said, uh, is this uh, a Reverend Branham? I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, well, he knew me. He said, I said, I can. I said, well, why can't you? I said, Jesus is already doing it. I said, I couldn't do what he's already done. He said, well, uh, 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 he said, will you pray for me? I said, yes, sir. And I prayed. I said, do you believe me? He said, yes, sir. I said, go on. You'll get your sight. And he said, uh, well, uh, uh, just a minute. He helped me by the coat. He said, just a moment. Uh, he said, will I receive my sight? I said, yes, sir. You're going to receive your sight. It'll be all right. And he said, uh, well, uh, walk on a little piece. And he come back and said, sir, you told me I was going to receive my sight. I said, that's right. He said, well, you said I was healed. I said, you are. He said, well, you told me I was healed and I can't see. I said, oh, man, do you see him? I said, I told him. Oh, man, by the way, was Catholic by faith. And I said, look, sir, you told me that you believe me. He said, well, these other people are talking about our ears. They're healed and well. I said, you are too, sir. Give, give the angel of the Lord a chance to. And he said, what must I do? I said, I said do you believe what I told you? He said, yes, sir. I said, well, then won't you act like it? I said, go on off here, testifying, saying, praise the Lord, heal me. He said, all right. They let him walk, the Lord, praise the Lord, freedom me. The next night, the old fellow interrupted the meeting four or five times. He's sitting up in the balcony. He said, hey, everybody, be quiet a minute. He raised up, all praise the Lord for healing me. <laughs> and I was speaking, you know, and he'd say, just a minute, Brother Branham. He said, all praise the Lord for healing me. The usher went away, and I shut my head, let him alone and see. He was having a good time at it. Well, afterwards, he went out on the street, and he sold papers, and he would praise the Lord for healing me. He thought, Eric Street, praise the Lord for healing me. And the people laughed at him, made fun of him. They thought the old man had gone crazy, you see. 
went crazy over religion. So they thought he was ready for the institution. So he went on like that for several days, yes, up to two or three weeks. And one day, a little newsboy with sold papers near him led him over to a barber shop to get a shave. And the barber, a little smart aleck, was always uh, trying to add more sense than he had gumption you know how to take care of. So he was sweating his razor, and he had Mr. Ryan shaved about halfway down on his face. He said, say, Dad, I heard when she went up to see that divine healer not long ago. He said, yep, I went up to see him. <laughs> said, I heard you got healed. He said, yep, praise the Lord, he healed me. And his eyes come open in the chair. He looked around and he said, I am healed now. And he jumped out of that chair with a towel around his neck and out the door. He left the barber behind him with the razor down the street. Uh, he couldn't see people. He could see objects and everything screaming to the top of his voice. And that man, John Rhines, in Dwarjack, Michigan, as far as I know, tonight, preaching divine healing by faith. That's right. What was it? He expected God to heal him. Jonah backslid. Now you know I'm not a bat. <laughs> All right. Went <laughs> in the belly of a whale. Missed his calling. Went, God had him tied hand and foot, towed him out in a sea, probably three or four miles deep out there from Nineveh. Look at him now, on a stormy sea, hands tied behind him, backslid, thrown out into the sea, a whale swallowed him. Yeah. You believe that? I believe the whale swallowed Jonah, like the Bible said. A little girl once, I think this is Brother Rediger, said this, Paul Rader's friend. I believe it's the Fort Wayne Tabernacle. A little girl got saved, and she was coming up the street. She had the Bible over her heart, and just a singing over her hair, plaited back, her little face was shining, and she was singing a good old hymn. So... There's an old infidel standing on the side of the street. He looked over at her and said, What you so happy about, sis? She said, The Lord saved me. <laughs> oh, that I'm happy. He said, Are you saved? He said, Oh, no. There is no such a thing as that. He said, That's all you know about it. He said, Well, he said, You believe that book you got in your hand? He said, Yes, sir. I believe every bit of it. A little old girl all fired up with the Holy Spirit, you know. He said, I guess you believe that story about the whale and Jonah. She said, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but I believe it. Sure, it's the truth. He said, how are you going to prove it besides any other way besides faith? She said, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Brother Jonah. <laughs> he said, perhaps Brother Jonah won't be there. She said, then you asked him. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> you asked him. You know who it be then. All right. I believe it's the truth. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible said Jonah swore the whale, I believe it, because it's the word of God. Amen. All right. There he is now. Backslid. Stormy sea. Hands tied behind him. Belly of a whale. Every time that fish eats, it goes to the bottom of the sea. A goldfish, when you feed him, he'll go down and throw his little swimmers out and rest at the bottom of the water, the hole. He found his prey and fed and went out to rest. The whale, probably after he got a belly full of backslidden preacher, went down to the bottom of the sea, throwed his wings out like that, or his fins, and he was going to rest a while. Here this Jonah was down there, seaweeds wrapped around his neck. Oh, talk about symptoms. He had a right to have them. If he looked this way, it was whale's belly. He looked that way, it was whale's belly. Everywhere he looked was whale's belly. <laughs> My, you're not even in that bad of shape tonight, no matter where you're at tonight. Look around everywhere, whale's belly. He had plenty of symptoms, didn't he? More than you got. 
But you know what he said? They're lying vanities. He said, Lord, once more I'll look to your holy temple. Now, I ain't going to look at the symptoms. I ain't going to look at how deep I am in the sea. I'm not going to look at my backsliding. I'm not going to look at these seaweeds around my neck. I'm not going to look at the whale's belly, but I'm going to look beyond that to your holy temple. Amen. There you are. Now, you know if you could ever pierce through that symptom, three miles of water, to the whale's belly, on to the temple to get a prayer of you to God, something was going to happen. Amen. I can see him turn over on his knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry I'm back to it. I'll take the right road if you'll let me out of here. And you know what? I had faith. When Solomon dedicated that temple of the Lord, he prayed that if God's children be in trouble anywhere, would look towards that temple and pray, then let God hear from heaven. And Jonah believed if he could look towards that temple, he had God's promise and he was expecting the whale to get him out. <laughs> God made that old whale so sick till he puked him up on the shore. That's, well, I did, excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. He uh, vomited him up on the shore. I didn't aim to say that, folks. Honest, I didn't. Anyhow, I'm just a country boy. But I'm just as sick as you can as you are when you're vomiting. So, all right, you put him out up on the shore. Is that right? All right, made him sick. If you go to a church that don't believe in divine healing, claim your rights in Christ, you'll have the same experience. <laughs> That's right. Fellowship, not with darkness. Notice. He looked towards God's holy temple. And if Jonah in the belly of a whale could look towards an earthly temple where Solomon prayed, how much more ought we tonight look towards the heavenly temple where Jesus sits at the right hand of God, shaking his bloody garment, making intercessions for your cancer, blinded, whatever it might be. Hallelujah! Oh, brand new case of old time Holy Ghost religion. Yes. Bring you out of it. Expecting his prayers to be heard. That old whale went right on towards the Nineveh just as hard as he could go. God set an oxygen tank down in there and kept him alive. All right. Got it somewhere. I don't know where God put the tank there, but he had the oxygen there that kept him alive. All right. Like God told Elisha, go up and sit down up there at the brook cedar. I've commanded the ravens to feed you. <laughs> no, they said that's all crazy, you know. Make such a prediction like that, like the Holy Ghost talks to anybody who's going to rain, he falls apart. You ever hear such a thing? God told him so. He believed God. He went right up there to the brook feeders and sat down. Every morning, here comes some raven. I packed him all for food. He sat down, handed down to him. He eat, thanked God, knelt down, got him a drink of water, went on. Dinner time come along. Here come the ravens back. Give you some more. Say, where did them ravens get it? I don't know. <laughs> they got some sandwiches somewhere. They had meat and bread. I don't know where they got it. The they brought it. Elijah accepted it and he didn't live. The doctor one time said to me, he said, Brother Brandon, don't you read those people shouting and going on like that? Don't you think that's just emotion? I said, no, sir. I said, the Holy Spirit, so where does it come from? I said, I don't know. He brings it. I accept it. I live by it. I don't know where it comes from. God commanded it to come. I believe it. Hallelujah! Yes, he said it was so. I believe it. <laughs> oh, I do. I feel religious right now. <laughs> mm. I'm not excited. Not of this. I know just exactly what I'm doing and where I am and all about it. Right. <clears throat> 
I know that the living God is in this building tonight. God who will judge me at the bar knows that. I know that he sure knows the secrets of every heart that's in this building. I claim tonight this, and God will confirm my, my, will confirm my claim. That's right. I claim that there's no disease too deep embedded. There's no cripple too badly crippled. There's no eyes too badly blind. I've seen those who were born literally blind and can even read now. There's no disease too great, but what our Lord has already healed. And here, the right mental attitude towards God's divine promise will heal every person in this building tonight. I say that, not being ashamed of my testimony, and knowing this, that in the presence of Almighty God, I'll have to stand and give an account for everything that I've said. Every word that I shall speak will be brought before me in the judgment. And I say this, that I'm not afraid to make this statement. Almighty God knows all things. I want you to believe me. I got all feeling good with the Holy Ghost. Do you believe in that? You sure act like it. <laughs> I do too. Yes, sir. Brother, I'm telling you, I like to live at the spout where the glory gushes out. Like a shower. <laughs> Not very often I get to get into these kind of meetings. But since I just opened myself up to pray for the sick, it's always cowed me down. But I believe the time has come since the last two nights ago to step right out, take that initiative side and say, Lord, I've always been a little timid to stand here and try to preach before people because I'm not very much educated. But I realize that Holy Ghost people don't care whether it's educated or not. They want the truth. That's right. That's right. Amen. And it blesses me and it blesses you, so God be my helper, I'll stay with it. Amen. Getting tired, been pushed around. That's right, I want you to believe and be healed now. And even all we usually preach them and knock it away from me. But it hasn't tonight. I feel it right now. It's right here in the building. Now, I believe that the sick people will be brought. What about it? He doesn't need to go through that again tonight, does he? Everyone believes. <laughs> Everyone believes, Brother Brown. Let's come through the line and believe God. Let him pray for you, and God will heal you. I believe it. Amen. You believe it with all your heart? <clears throat> all right. I have someone to know so I can just get something here, at least one patient or something, Brother Hall. So I can get the people. How many strangers in here has never seen the discernments of the Lord? Look at the crowd. All right. Yeah, watch cars. Just sit down. Just a minute. Watch that. Just a minute. I'm not, I'm not upset. <laughs> I'm <right>. feeling fine. <clears throat> How many cards you give out? Fifty. Fifty. Yes, sir. Fifty. Yeah. All right. Just a moment. God knows. He who is my sole judge knows that this discernment is only given not for self appraisal that's only given to glorify Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The anointing here. I know it's in the building. I don't know where. But I believe if I set some person before me, it'll, it'll come down. And I want at least one person so that it could be. I ought to get somebody with a prayer card, I guess, perhaps. Or you give out, bring me 53, prayer card 53. Or if that's here, is anybody here with prayer card Y53 or Z53? What is the number, honey? Why? Y? Y53? All right, bring the person up here. All right, let's get someone else now. How many's got prayer cards? So I can see where you're at. I'll just call your hand. Or you're so scattered. <laughs> Now, will you pray for me just a moment? Please, now, nobody's stirring for just a few minutes. I want you to do this one thing. <clears throat> All right. All right, right let the lady come on. Bring on. See, you got one of my books, sister. Oh, you got the picture of the angel of the Lord there? How many never did see it? I see your hand. Never seen the picture that was scientifically that I've been talking of. 
Here's exactly what's there. Here's a paper from the best researcher is in the United States. Has to go with it. Hanging in Washington, D.C. tonight, copyrighted. The first time in all the world's history that a supernatural being. See that light? That was taken by the American Photographer Association. It's handled by George J. Lacey, FBI. Trotting the shell building in Houston, Texas, under doctor for two days, and here's the report come back when they put it under every test they could to see if it was make belief or something. And when the man come out, here's his testimony here. A critic of mine. That's right. How the Holy Ghost and that same supernatural being who I've claimed and people have seen since I was a little boy is right here at the platform tonight. That's right. That's true. God bless you, sister. I trust it'll be great to you. Would you be seated just a moment? <clears throat> Everybody reverent now. We like to rejoice. Everybody likes to rejoice. I do. But now when you're approaching God, there's a certain way to approach. Everybody be real reverent and pray. <clears throat> now, I, I don't say after being preaching, I just know it's here. I don't know where it'll be or not. I just have to find out, see if it, if it would. Now, I pray thee, Heavenly Father, as I'm sitting here at the platform, I'm thinking tonight of my master who sat down by the well one time and a lady came out to draw some water. He talked to her a while and told her where her trouble lay. One day maybe he was sitting by the roadside on a rock or something and along came a man who was coming really to criticize him but when he told him what was wrong he said Thou art the Son of God. You promised that them things that you did, we do also. Greater. You know this woman, I do not. I pray thee, Lord, you who sent the angel to one of these servants on an infant laying in his mother's arms, I pray thee, Father, that you'll send him tonight. And now, bless thy people as just spoke about your servant Simeon. How he was led by the Spirit. May they see, Lord, and in this vindication, know sure that you're here and your willingness to heal them in your word just as true is sure to heal them as it is to fulfill this promise. Grant it, Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus. Amen. We better start the prayer. <laughs> Are you? Now, there's no, there's no need for him to go any farther, is there, with this? Everyone's convinced. Every one of you folks tonight, will you just go through here and let him pray a little prayer for you and believe God? Will you? Amen. Hallelujah. This is too hard on him. We're just going to have to bring the line through now and just pray a little prayer. I, I'm not a, a sissy, friends, but that just gets me to a place I'm just swimming around and around now. I tell you, friends, out over this audience right now, I surely, if God testifying and I'm telling you the truth, I don't hold the patient very long. Just as soon as I can find enough faith to see it healed, I'll let it go. Long we, we don't know each other. I know nothing about it no more than well, maybe what you've read. And I just see you sitting there. Do you believe that, uh, that God will answer prayer for, his, for me? What do you think about Have you read the book yet? The book that I have there, my book, you, you haven't read it. You've heard about what the Lord is doing, haven't you? You believe that's true? Those testimonies about the angel of God and that, what you see on the picture there, you believe that's the truth? <clears throat> Do you believe it's near you now? You, you believe it? You believe it, that feeling, that now it's moving on you. Would you brothers kind of bow your head just a little if you would? I'm just looking now the audience can watch me the brothers looking this way there see I'm trying to see but I can touch her and tell what was wrong with her he'd speak right through me when I touch her but I want to see a vision if I can something that'd be different something to, that no like Philip Jesus said before you come here you was under a fig tree you remember that he said why well, you're the son of God he told the woman she had more than one husband she said you're a prophet he said he was the Christ. Now, I'm telling you, 
I, this what is in this room tonight, blessing these people and so forth, to my opinion, with all my heart, as a human can believe, it's the Holy Ghost. I believe that what you're looking at there, on that picture, I had nothing to do with that coming to me. I was it's not any birthright of mine that I deserve, but I believe God just had to call somebody for this day, and He called and just me and my. I guess He taught me because I was knew I'd never have an opportunity to have an education or be smart or anything. But He just called me, so I I pray that He found confidence and know that I trust Him and believe Him. And I love Him. Now, he may turn me down at the day, but I love Him. Now, I begin to see now coming. I, I, I see you moving off from me at this time. Yes? You have sort of an inward trouble, don't you? Your trouble's inward, isn't it? Kind of like a rectal trouble? Something like hemorrhoids, isn't that right? And say, it is more than that. Your, your eyes are going bad. They're go getting worse all the time, aren't they? You're having other troubles. You're extremely nervous, aren't you, sister? I see you, but get very upset quick. Isn't that true? And it seems like you can't stand hot weather too good. It looks like I see when you keep, you're in a shade. Say, you, you had an accident too, haven't you? Wasn't you hit by an automobile? Isn't that right? That's what's called this trouble. That's your whole trouble right there. Isn't that right? Go, sister. You're blessed of God. You're going to be all right. You're healed. All right. Now, I got somebody who would like to... Is there someone else? What? Anybody? Or call. Let's see. Just call one more card, if you will, somewhere. Let's see. Let's call, um, what was that? 65? What was her number? 53. Let's call 60. Let's call 62. Anybody got a prayer card? 62? Someone with a prayer card? 62? All right. Could we maybe be getting some more already or something? Or you? Sister, stand where you are and look this away. You believe me as God, sir? With all your heart? There's so many pulling right in there. Maybe you better come on the platform just a moment. <clears throat> what do you think about him? you can sit down, Paul. Yes, ma'am, you're in distress, aren't you? You're very weary, aren't you, sister? Now, wait. Uh, you're... Uh, look, uh, just a minute, sister. I, I lost... Uh, just, um, everybody, just try to be as reverent as you can for a moment. Yes, ma'am. I've seen a, a doctor standing near you, and it went away, kind of a... A good-sized man that's examined you. Isn't that right? A good-sized doctor. And, and I believe your case is almost hopeless. Say, isn't it a big hernia or something? Isn't that right? A big hernia that you can't be operated on for. Isn't that right? God bless you, Mother. Come here. <laughs> Heavenly Father, your spirit. <laughs> oh, God. Have mercy, good dear God, upon this poor mother. I pray that you bless her, dear God, and let her live and be well. Grant it, Heavenly Father, for your glory in Jesus Christ's name. That's all right. That's all. Uh, brother, sister, I've told you the truth. I've been honest with you. This is honest I can be here now. How much more would you want to believe? Would you believe it if God is?